This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Delta, American, and United are among the most controversial airlines in the world. But one thing is for sure. If you're flying within the US, they are almost impossible to avoid. Is the difference really big enough to motivate paying for one over the other? Let's find out in the special return of Economy Week, a successful series I did back in 2017 and 2018. And the whole premise of it is to compare three different airlines, preferably with a common aircraft type on each, so that we can see which airline offers the superior experience, but it's me flying them back to back. And obviously, that's not super practical right now. So I sought help from a trusted friend, Colton. He's as obsessed with aviation as me and he knows his US airlines. He had the chance to fly American and United last week, so he'll be covering them while I cover Delta and as a special bonus in the end, JetBlue. Together, we've pieced together the most comprehensive comparison on flying within the US on what is hopefully the tail end of the pandemic in the US as more and more people are vaccinated and look to travel in the spring and the summer. So one last thing until we dive into the video that I wanna remind you about is that until the end of the year, if I reach 500,000 subscribers on my channel, I'm gonna be giving away three tickets for three lucky winners of my subscribers to come with me on a flight in my favorite business class in the world, Q Suite, in the beginning of 2022. So all you need to do is be subscribed to enter. Now let's get into the video. So Colton, what was your overall impression of flying in the US at the moment? You know, above all, I still kind of think it's relatively normal to say the least, because it's still crowded. There's still people everywhere. It's not as abnormal as I thought it would be, to be honest. Really? Were there a lot of people when you were at the airport? Uh, yes. I don't know how it was on the East Coast, but there was people everywhere. In Florida, it was obviously crazy because a lot of people are going to Florida, but I flew from LaGuardia and that actually wasn't so bad. I was surprised. I guess I was there at not a very busy time or something, but but it was completely fine. Like, I think I was one of two flights leaving, so so it was no big deal. One of two? Yeah, at that, at, at that specific time. In Phoenix, I swear it was like a zoo. I mean, granted, I was a little late to my flight. <laughs> we can talk about <laughs> yeah. that later. But I was still able to get there and get through security in like 12 minutes, which usually, I mean, normal travelers give like two hours to travel, but, but there was people everywhere getting ready to go. And all my flights were 100% full. Wow. Yeah. So that's when it really helps to have the perk that you get on Delta which we'll talk about in a second. <laughs> so what about, did you see any older people? That's what I'm really curious about because as more people get vaccinated, surely we'll start to see people of all ages traveling now. You know what? Surprisingly, there was a lot. Um, I actually noticed that because there was a really, really, really old person on one of my flights. He was on, I think it was my first flight of the day. He literally had to sit in the back of the plane. He had a walker. And I was like, this what? old guy is on a packed American <laughs> Airlines plane and nobody's helping him. All right, so what airline are we starting with today? We're starting with United. So let's dive into United. All right, let's go. So our journey with United Airlines begins at San Francisco International Airport, an airport I frequent a lot and one of United's largest hubs. I headed straight to the check-in desk for my first flight of the day, where I found myself in a little bit of a predicament. I noticed the day before I wasn't able to check in online, so a very friendly United rep actually checked me in at the desk. I got my boarding pass and I headed directly to the Centurion Lounge, where I got some coffee and the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. Parked at gate F1 was my A320 awaiting to take me over to Las Vegas. The gate area was pretty empty and the boarding process was fairly simple, but there was a lot of people really eager to get on board. Once on board, I was greeted by the paper thin seats made of cardboard in United's economy that were packed 100%. Even though this A320 came with adjustable headrests, that didn't really make up for the fact that I'm only 5'8 and had pretty much zero leg room in this plane. But in true American-based airline fashion, there are individual air vents at every seat. And before I knew it, we were blasting off out of SFO on a very, very windy San Francisco day. I knew that I was booking a basic economy fare, and that's exactly what I got. 
basic economy. A seat getting me from one city to the other, no power outlets even though the flight attendants kept saying there were some, Wi-Fi that was completely inoperative, but to United's advantage, they did offer a service with sanitizing wipes and drinks except for alcohol, but I chose water. One thing that was really obvious was that the flight attendants did not want to be there whatsoever. Take a listen and tell me for yourself. Once you, once we arrive at the gate and the seatbelt sign has been turned off, please remain seated until we call your row to the plane. I think I'm speaking for both the passengers and the crew when I say that the pandemic fatigue was real. Overall, I'd say that my experience with United was exactly what I was expecting. Basic. But I did get what I paid for. $37 one way from one city to the next in under an hour and a half. Can't get much better than that. All right, so that was my take on my United Airlines experience flying in the US and now on to the real professional <laughs> flying Delta. <laughs> All right, yeah. As you'll see, most of the stuff is, is in the next video portion. So I don't have much to say except one anecdote that you'll hear a little bit in. So let's dive right in to what was Delta that is supposed supposed to be the best of the US3 like. So where do we begin? Delta has been my airline of choice during the past few months for one reason and one reason only. Through the end of April, Delta is committed to blocking middle seats on all flights domestically. As flights fill up, this is a huge perk. But of course, as more people get vaccinated, we can expect even Delta will soon allow full flights probably in May or June, but for now, you have space. As I mentioned, I took a lot of flights with Delta this year. Between January and March, I flew them six times, which is a lot for me. Unfortunately, the main flight I recorded for this video happened to be by far the worst of the six. So I'll share the bad experience first and then talk about my other experiences to give you guys an idea of the average Delta flight. My journey started at New York LaGuardia from my flight down to Fort Lauderdale. Delta has a significant hub at LaGuardia and most flights operate out of Terminal D. As far as LaGuardia goes, Terminal D is not bad at all and it's clear that many changes have been made in the past few years. As I arrived to check in, the machines weren't working so I got in line to check in with an agent and this is where things started to go south. So Colton, this is what happens as I'm going up to the check-in desk. Usually, I don't feel that check-in agents are the ones to wave you over. You just go to the next one that's available. In normal circumstances, I take a lot of flights every year and that's what I always do. So that's what I did at LaGuardia. I walked up when the agent became free, you know, cheerful faced and he turns oh, yeah. and he says to me, I'm not finished. You can't just come up to me like that. And I go, I don't know, I just expect people to have a general niceness, but obviously we're in, it's a, I understand there can be really rude customers and it's a tough job, but my, my response, I should have been more calm. I don't know. My reaction was not bad, but I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. If you want, I can go fly a different airline today. And he got <laughs> so pissed and I was just like, wow. So that was my check-in situation. I was just surprised, honestly, because especially Delta doesn't usually have very bad staff. So that kind of set the tone, but let's see what the rest of the flight was like. After a quick stop in the Delta Sky Club, thanks to my American Express Platinum card, I headed to the gate, scanned my boarding card, and got the dreaded beep. Seat change. Out of nowhere, I had been moved from a good seat far forward to the very back row. Well, stuff happens, right? But then I got to my seat. No window, no recline, ouch. Avoid the last row at all costs. Not so fun when you are moved into one seat and you're not given a chance to move to your original seat because the flight is full. At this point, can you guess how old the aircraft I was flying on was? Most people would probably never guess correctly. 18 years old. Delta really does a fantastic job refurbishing all planes, fillers, Botox, the lot. So now onto the seat and specifically the legroom, 
which is always adequate on Delta. It certainly isn't generous, but it's not terrible. The seat design is pretty standard as well, and as you'll see at the end of the video, in our bonus airline of the week, it's not near the level of JetBlue. What about entertainment and Wi-Fi, both of which are important, especially if you're not in a window seat so you can't be entertained by looking out. This is an area where Delta excels because almost all their aircraft have in-seat entertainment screens. Those that don't are used on shorter routes and offer free streaming over Wi-Fi like on their 717s. As Delta gets new planes, they're always installing monitors on those, while American and United are not. Wi-Fi on Delta is also reasonably priced, but not very high speed, at least on my flights. Delta did recently announce a partnership with Viasat though to increase these speeds over the coming months and years, so I'm super excited to see that. Since our flight was heading to Florida, the crowds on board were interesting. Two people tried to go to the lavatory as we were taxiing to the runway, and for some reason, the crew let them. But don't get me wrong, the crew on board was friendly and professional throughout the flight. In fact, around 45 minutes before landing, I clicked the crew call button, and the flight attendant was at my seat within three seconds. Sir, it's two dollars. Oh, it's two dollars. Yes. Oh, all right. Unfortunately, what I was asking for was a pair of headphones and I found out they cost $2. That's a cheap move on the world's most profitable airline on a 3 hour flight. For food, Delta currently offers pre-packed snack bags with contents that vary between flights. It's not bad, but it's not great. In the coming weeks they're expanding their offering at least so there will be more drink choices. And that's pretty much it for this flight on Delta, but I just want to leave you with a comparison to their 737 cabins, which are significantly worse than their A320s. Delta's becoming more and more Airbus focused and it's evident even in their cabin investments. Some 737s don't even feature adjustable headrests, which all A320s do. That's good to note, particularly for overnight flights where a nice sturdy headrest can make a world of difference. So Dan, we have a video sponsor, right? We do. I've taken dozens of classes in the six months I've had Skillshare, but the biggest thing I've learned is not from a single class. Rather, it's that one of the best ways to improve your happiness and excitement is to keep learning new skills and knowledge, period. Nothing feels better than learning something from scratch and noticing how your skill level is improving. And I'm genuinely so grateful for the time I've taken on a variety of topics among thousands on Skillshare. It goes without saying that it's worth the price, which is less than $10 a month with an annual membership if you're one of the first thousand people to tap the link at the top of the description. After your free trial, of course. Right now, I'm taking a class by Dale McManus all about drone photography, which is a great way for me to increase my drone skills. Check out Skillshare now and join the world's greatest online learning community. Thanks so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now on to the very last airline, the one some of you might have been waiting for. Colton, we're doing American Airlines. Do you have anything to say about it? Uh, I have a few things. <laughs> Uh, let's dive into what my experience was not only on one, but two flights on American. Now I fly American a lot, but these two flights pretty much wrapped up how I feel about American as a whole. Let's jump into it. So I have to quickly apologize because I woke up 15 minutes before boarding started for this flight. So I was a little bit late. Shockingly, I was able to board with my boarding group right on time and I was so excited to be there. Also shocking, this A321 on American Airlines had IFE in every single seat, including mine, which was broken. But I was still grateful that it was there even though I wasn't going to be able to use it and the fact that I didn't have any legroom or room for my backpack because of the giant computer box underneath the seat. But I had a fantastic overwing view and we pushed back from gate A21 in no time. We were blasting off on our way to San Francisco. Now, American Airlines is not blocking out middle seats, but somehow I got the only two seats open on the entire plane next to me. As you can see how busy the Phoenix airport was, there was so many planes in line to take off. After we blasted off, the plane immediately was going into some really rough air, which kept the fastened seatbelt sign on for the majority of the flight. The cabin itself was pretty peaceful the entire flight, and after I used the restroom in the back, I asked the flight attendants for some water because there is no service whatsoever on any of American's short-haul flights. 
The seat itself was actually very long haul reminiscent to me. It had the really nice half table, overhead air vents, and it also had an outlet so that way I was able to sit in my seat and get some work done. Also, unlike United, American's Wi-Fi is super fast and was working fantastic this entire flight. I took advantage of it while I was working. It is a little bit on the expensive side, but if you're using it for their free entertainment options or want to buy a pass or stream Apple Music, it is worth it. Since this flight was so simple, easy, and fast, we touched down smoothly in San Francisco about one and a half hours later, where the flight attendants were super friendly and told everybody to remain seated until they were called. Now, if you live in the US and you've been flying through COVID, you know that most people don't follow this rule, but I was happy to see a few people were, and I was gladly waiting my turn to exit the plane as well. Now quickly for my second flight of the day on American, I had an entire row to myself and the exit row with no seat in front of me, so I had the best seat in the house. Again, this is a super, super windy day for flying, but we landed safely and smoothly with one of the best crews I have ever had on American Airlines ever. So I think it goes without saying that American Airlines truly surprised me. I appreciate that they're being COVID safe and they're creating a warm and welcoming and friendly environment for their passengers. I truly enjoyed my flights in American and I am excited to fly with them again in the future, hoping that I have the same luck. That is it. Thank you so much, Colton. So now we kind of need to see how these airlines compare. It's really interesting comparing our conclusion here to the conclusion I had when I did the same comparison three years ago. Then I said, I choose my US airline based on convenience and price since the difference just isn't big enough. Now, I disagree. Delta clearly offers the most consistent experience of the three airlines. They have entertainment, Wi-Fi, and power ports on almost all aircraft. Even so, it's sad to see that none of them are entirely consistent, like with Delta's A320s versus 737s, for example. And unfortunately, even the best is not really great. In general, did any of the flights stick out to you as more impressive than the other? You know, yes, surprisingly, my last flight of the day, the one that I was not even planning to really get that much footage of because I knew it would kind of be a cookie cutter experience was the best flight of the day. Having that exit row with no seat in front of me, having an entire row to myself, having a really friendly staff and, and an open environment was the best. And it was the fastest flight and we were 30 minutes earlier than we were expecting. So I don't know, what about Amazing. you? Yeah, uh, for me, I don't want to spoil too much because after this, I'm showing you the bonus airline, JetBlue, and I flew them right after Delta. The contrast was really interesting since Delta gets so much praise. So I think you guys, you guys are going to find value in this. And if you live in a city that's served by JetBlue, congrats. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me on this video, Colton. Where can people find you? Well, thank you for having me. I'm so grateful that I'm here. Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Seat1A Travels or on YouTube at Seat1A Travels as well. And yeah, that's that's that. I only really use those two platforms. Amazing. All right. Thank you, Colton. Again, can't wait to see you in a future video, hopefully. Until we see you all next time. Fly, fly safe. safe. So you made it to the end, congratulations. Now here's a little bonus clip from my JetBlue flight from Fort Lauderdale to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. What we really wanted to show you guys from this flight is how much better the smaller US airlines generally are than the US-3. Even on their newest aircraft where JetBlue is supposedly decreasing the legroom, they have vastly more legroom, a more modern and thought out seat, always friendly service and free Wi-Fi. I repeat, free Wi-Fi for all. JetBlue is the true winner of Economy Week and I always go for them when I have the choice.